Hello, everybody. Good evening. Uh, good afternoon as well. And we are going now to start uh, the lecture from uh, Generation Alpha and iGen, Super Connected Kids, Are They More Tolerant? Hosted by Lilian Itzikovic Leventhal. Uh, I, want to uh, I want to let you guys know that the certificate for this lecture will be available. The link to download it will be available during the lecture on this video description. Okay, so don't worry, this, uh, it will be available during the lecture and hope you enjoy it. Please welcome Lillian. Thank you so much. Thank you, SBS, for inviting me to be here with you once again. Thank you all for being with us here this afternoon, and uh, I hope uh, we can learn from each other. And uh, it's really a pleasure to be here. And uh, I'd like to say that you can send your questions in the chat, and SBS will be collecting them. And at the end, hopefully, we have some time to answer to your questions. Uh, the presentation will be available for you. So all the links and everything, all the suggestions that I'll be giving will be available for you. Okay, I hope you have a good time for the next hour. Okay, well, Generation Alpha, let's go. Oh my gosh, Generation Alpha, also known as the Glass Generation, the I Generation, the Global Generation. So lots of names given to these children. Uh, why? Why was it named Alpha Generation? It's uh, the beginning of a Greek era once again, but it's not a return to the old. It's the start of something new. So this generation, I'll show you to when it goes, and after that, there'll be beta, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, because it's counting again. This is for the future. We have enough letters to move on, right? So that's why it's called Generation Alpha, but there are other names, and uh, I believe that in the future, other names will also be added to these ones, okay? Well, very important. Let's understand, because my, my main point here today with you is to make you understand uh, what Generation Alpha means and how to deal with them. Of course, I have some suggestions of activities and, and websites and resources, because we don't live without them. But the thing is, we really can teach them from wherever we are. And this is the perfect generation for that. In fact, the first generation of students in the world born totally in the 21st century. Can you figure how important that is? Because they are totally different from the previous ones. And we're going to take a look at that in a few minutes. An interesting fact too, is that by the 2025, two billion people uh, will have been born. So that's when it ends, 2025. Two billion of new students. Uh, new generation. And in fact, this is the most diverse generation ever. Why? Why diversity? Uh, because, you know what, there are lots of different things. These, uh, at least the scientists say that, uh, uh, that this generation will uh, live longer, will uh, start earning years later, will live longer with the family. Interesting, isn't it? Well, I don't know. Their lifespan will be uh, uh, longer, and uh, they will also work later. And uh, I like a name that was given, that uh, is their screenagers. I like that. I really do. And these are the old, and they will be the oldest parents of any generation. Exactly because they they believe they're going to start having babies later, so it is it is different from the previous generations. In fact, I think that every every generation is different, but this one is even more special. I would say. Well, let's see if I did it right. Yes, as you can see in this picture here, we have this is uh, the generation alpha. They were born uh, uh, as of two thousand ten. In fact, there are some differences depending on uh, on the author. You see here it says 2024. Some people will say that it moves up to 2025. 
politics in general. So we had Generation Y, and they were set to be confident. Then we had the Z, that they were competitive. And people say that the alpha are the decision makers. And we're going to see some characteristics of that, why they are called the decision makers. Uh, well, this is the best picture ever. Let's take a look. I'm, uh, uh, since you're going to have the presentation, you can take a look at it better later on. But here, I'd like to call your attention to the, the name origin. If, if you go back, we had the builders, right? They built the Depression and World War II. That was that, that time after World War II. Baby boomers, super duper famous. And uh, we had the economic boom. That's why the boomers. Generation X. Uh, the spans of 15 years, the Y before the millennials, Generation Z, they followed the Y, and that was the end of the millennium generation and now Generation Alpha. So uh, going to the last row here, look at that, the screen content. And this is this reveals, in my opinion, the best, uh, uh, the best picture we can think of. The builders, we had the cinema, then we had the TV, Generation X had the VCR, and uh, if, you, if you haven't used it, well, you remember somebody who has. Then we had the internet, and then we had our mobiles, the devices, and nowadays we have the streaming. So it's just crazy, I don't know what's gonna come next. But this shows us a little bit of uh, uh, how things change. And they change in the devices, they change in the, the leadership styles. When we think that the Generation Alpha nowadays is, is viewed as a generation that should inspire instead of empower, uh, that's important because when we think of the 21st century skills for our students, uh, uh, we want them to be critic, we want them to be develop the competences and everything, and we want to inspire them because they are the ones who need to take the lead of uh, the development of the language, of their knowledge and everything. They are the ones to become more autonomous. Uh, and in fact, they are as early as never before. So, oops, I hope the video plays. If it doesn't, uh, you're going to see the link was uh, uh, is available for you guys, and um, anyway, so you have the where to find it in YouTube. Let's see if it, hopefully it will work.
So for those who had the problem of not listening or if you didn't connect or if there was a delay, I'm sorry, but you have the link, take a look at that. It's interesting to see when they analyze uh, how the, the, the market is going to be for these, uh, for these kids, how creative they are supposed to be and resilient. In fact, we can talk about resilient now, right? I believe that teachers in the world are the experts of re resilience. But uh, getting back to the Generation Alpha, think of that. The iPads and the tablets were their first babysitters. For them, for this generation, as of 2010, if you think about it, computers, devices are more natural than paper, in fact. They are the screenagers. Uh, uh, instead of using Google, that's different already. Instead of using Google like we do, they go straight to the YouTube and look for answers, uh, uh, recorded answers, things that they can look and listen. And they don't want to read anymore. I mean, they do read, but they don't want to read as much as uh, we wanted them to. And uh, for them, navigating at digital devices is absolutely natural. Not using them is weird. And, and that's okay with them. Uh, the idea of making errors and mistakes, of trying, not working out because they'll try again, that's different from the previous generation. They're not that afraid of trying. And, uh, and that's okay. And if anybody mocks them, there'll be a meme and that's it. So uh, uh, this is also different. If you think of the, of the kids, they will go for, for, for shorter attention spans to gamification. So they stand uh, uh, on the screen much longer and that's okay with them. In fact, I would say that uh, uh, they prefer to be online, prefer to be on the screens than face to face. That's something that we realize. Some should, not all of them, of course, but some students show better development uh, at this time of the pandemic. So that was uh, others know, of course, but but uh, a lot of students that we never expected to, they they really uh, presented better performance, and that was interesting too. And another research said that twenty four percent of the, the the kids they interviewed prefer to spend more time in the with the friends online than together. So virtual reality for them is something absolutely normal. When we think of virtual reality, to use it in class with the special classes and that with the, uh, using the mobile to, to see and be in different places, when we think of that, it's, it's a kind of resource that we have never had before, uh, at least not here in Brazil. And nowadays we start, we have already started having them. And, but for the children, it's absolutely normal. It's okay, there's nothing, they feel comfortable, that's my point, you see? They really do feel comfort, comfortable, sorry. Uh, these children are drawn into interactive media because they are the decision makers. Remember, I showed you in a slide beforehand. They make decisions of uh, what they want to create, the apps they want to use. They have choices at the app. So they became producers uh, within their choices. And they started with the devices and it ended up going to the families. I'll talk about it. That, that's crazy because we could see delays in speech development, some development issues, and, uh, and we also saw this uh, desire for gratification in the past. Children wanted stickers. Remember that? would give them a sticker or a stamp or something like that. Nowadays, uh, they want gratification and the games will, will reward them instantly. So that's uh, quite interesting too. I wanted to talk about the relationship they have with the parents. That's something that also calls my attention. Uh, this Australian consultant, Mark McCrindle, said, Generation Alpha is part of an intentional global experiment with screens are placed in front of them from the youngest age as pacifiers, entertainers, and educational aides. And that's absolutely true. 
when we, from the point of view of a family relationship, it's interesting that their parents are the millennials. So when they get to, to make decisions at home, these kids are, are her parents take into consideration their opinion. And uh, you know what? Their voices matter and they know that. So if they're going to, to I have a cat that's going to show, you see guys, it happens every time you're teaching, doesn't it? So, because we, they see us speaking and they want to be part of it, just go. Uh, so the kids, they have a say, uh, uh, they want to be seen as equals, they want to make choices, they want to participate, and, uh, and regarding technological stuff, I would say that a lot of parents will listen to the, the kids before buying anything new. And that makes a total difference in the market because now they are decision makers and they will continue to be. So I ask you, what do we need to know about our students to help them learn? What? We'll see something about that. What assessments can provide that information reliably? I'm not going to go into assessment because the next lecture, Isabella villas Boas is going to talk exactly about that. And I recommend you guys go and watch what she has to say. That'll be very special. So, uh, but there are some negative points to the alpha generation. Not everything is a bit of roses, of course not. So, when, uh, when the negative, the face-to-face -face relationship is... Uh, bad not having this close contact to people is uh it's not good for social skills for emotional skills they also have this heavy use of gaming so sometimes they some of them might be very competitive not necessarily cooperative they do not want to read books newspapers they want results and information as fast as they can have and uh, possibly that's something that we have already faced. I would say that we have more kids nowadays who are depressed. The rate of, uh, in fact, the, the, the rate of uh, suicide is even higher nowadays, and it tends to be even higher in the future because of the isolation. The kids are, uh, they feel more lonely somehow. They don't feel they are needed. So, these are also characteristics of the alpha generation that we have to take into consideration. This is how I see our uh, children nowadays, because this is how it goes. They do everything at the same time. They watch classes online and they're in their beds. How many students have you got during this pandemic time when you were isolated that were attending Classes, unfortunately, but to buy by their beds, sometimes even under the bed. So this is how I see them. It's it's a kind of a chaos, but in their minds it is organized. Well, uh, this little dog here will show you exactly what I mean by a different generation, because it shows us that. Uh, how we make no sense to them and how we have to pay attention to what they say so we can learn from them. Not only that, so that uh, we, we, we can um, realize their real needs because they are different. Everybody says, oh, we don't know the kind of jobs we're going to have in the future. No, we don't. But we know the kind of people we're going to need in the market. This we do. We're going to need people who are very creative, resilient, who can uh, work in, in different positions in the company, who can inspire other people, who can work well in groups, who can be a, a, a team player, etc., etc., etc. So what uh, can we do to get there? Another video. And uh, let's see. I hope you can, uh, you can hear that, okay?
I wouldn't say I I, uh, I hope you could watch it. If not, go to the link and watch it. It's interesting to see how they get enthusiastic about the gadgets they have. And uh, sometimes for some of them, not for all of them, the, the, the phone or the game or the, the tablet can be more interesting than pets. Uh, I'm very sad to hear that. But anyway, wanted to share with you a case. This one I have to read because I don't know it exactly. So, but this was interesting because there is a seven-year-old kid, Ryan, of Ryan Toys Review. He's been doing reviews on his Ryan, Ryan's World YouTube channel since he was four years old. So this kid started with four years old, a new channel on the YouTube, and he's got 18 million subscribers Th that's it i don't even have to go on right oh yeah uh they said here that he launched a line of toys uh last fall and it was sold out in less than 10 minutes at walmart's website on black friday can you imagine that this kid is seven nowadays and uh well why not he's got the product he's the influencer and he's got the people who, who want to hear what he has to say. So uh, that's how different things are going to be from now on. So Michael Fisher is another consultant that I, I really enjoyed reading his ideas. Uh, when he says that, well, yes, we, we, we had the STEM, uh, we had the maker spaces at schools. Uh-huh, perfect. But the thing is... The students want to make and produce their own media. They want to work with things and make things that matter. They want to choose what they want to make. So sometimes we will propose a project with the maker space, and that's not what the children want. So careful with that. Listen to them. I'll repeat this uh, throughout our conversation today. And uh, they also want their input to be valid. They want to choose what and how they will learn. We're starting in Brazil to do that with electives. We're starting at uh, the high school uh, programs in Brazil uh, with the new BNCC. That's what, that's what we're doing now. And these kids are very young. And they've been doing this all over the world already. Uh, they want to have personalized experience that goes very close to meaningful learning. So when you have your hands on, you get engaged to what you're doing and you remember, you learn how to do it. It's important to remember that the content is essential. The context is important, but the content, what they're gonna do, what they're gonna produce, this is even more important, okay? He also said, that uh, these children are connected digitally that we know, of course, but they're not connected physically. So what are we going to do about that? That I ask you, what are you going to do about that? How can you improve and find a balance? They are, as we mentioned before, the most technologically literate generation, but technology itself doesn't really matter. What matters is what they can do with that. So technology for technology, they don't care. But what can we achieve with that? This is what our children care about. Uh, they will not care about the grades they get in the tasks, the, the results they have in terms of grades and numbers. But the most important thing nowadays is to show the students 
how well they have learned something. This is the change of concept. So it's not important, really. The numbers are not important, but how well they learn that and what for. So this is the, the I would say, the magic change that we've been facing. So the, the, the more variety we have in spaces and kinds of, uh, of uh, learning and studying, the better for the students. So flexible environments, using computers, having hybrid classes, remote classes, uh, classes at school, using the spaces you have at school, having blended learning, having inverted classes, you know, all that makes the difference. That's why we said in the beginning that the children would be, uh, uh, would be different. So for them, the devices are crayons. In fact, they love coloring with the, with the, uh, with their uh, uh, apps and, and things that they can color with their fingers instead of using uh, crayons, for instance. So we are preparing this generation considering previous needs but, and not their needs. So this got to change. Lots of good materials available for us to study and realize that and put that into practice. Uh, there's got to be an equilibrium that goes beyond the walls of the school. That is, uh, uh, they really need to see how meaningful what they're learning is and how related to the world it is. So that will make them interact at school and with each other. So uh, uh, the print literacy that we used to teach, of course, we still have to teach, but that's not the main point anymore technological literacy, uh, uh, the gamification, the opening the minds, and everything, are res I would say that they're resources, means to an end, you know? Uh, and I think that they're gonna lack social skills. Other authors said that too, and I do believe they're going to lack social skills. And even now, when we think of the pandemia, when these kids at home, that we were not able, we have already sort of skipped a year, we're gonna have another crazy year in the world. And uh, how much does that represent in a year and a half or two for our developing social skills? So we really, really have to do our best. Of course, we always do, that's the point. So these kids that we're teaching now, this alpha generation, they will always remember the pandemic because they went, that's when they were stuck at home, when they were wearing masks, and uh, when they couldn't go out, they couldn't play outside, they couldn't be with their friends. But they say, the scientists say that they're gonna live longer, they're gonna be wealthier, and that the grandparents are gonna make the difference is stepping into the society and taking care of the children because they will either go to school or stay with the grandparents. And, and if you really pay attention to that in the world, it's moving towards that, really is. This research was also interesting. It suggests that online learning has been shown to increase retention of information, take less time, meaning the changes coronavirus have caused might be here to stay. That's what I was uh, mentioned before, because some, some uh, uh, researchers have already shown that to us. So here is uh, this one that you can take a look. And uh, that really calls my attention. Uh, in the sense of, oh, oh my, what's going to be the next step? That's why I ask you, so what now? Where should we go? What should we do? I would love to hear your ideas, but since I can't, not now, I'll show you some of mine, okay? And some of the, the, the ideas that I have researched around. One thing important in your attitude, do not ignore the break. You're going back to classes now? and classes that can be taught from wherever you are, but do not ignore. The first thing you need to do, you, ha you have to recognize. You have to talk to your students about it. At your school, you have to show the students that it affected you too, and your family, and your habits, and your routine, that it happened to all of us. So it's, it's impossible to go back to class 
and start, well, let's learn the language. Let's start, uh, let's do it again. Uh, uh, go back to what we were doing before. No, it's never going to be like before. But that's okay. That's all right. We can cope with that. And they can learn how to cope with that too. Important. Practice the new rules in English. Because nowadays you have, well, uh, uh, wash the hands, put the mask, change the mask, can do this, can't do that. Take time of your class to go over all the new rules and do it in English so that they get used to it. They're too young. Use TPR. Use miming. Stand up, sit down. Simple games. Right here, I, I, I wrote down some examples of things, simple games that they will have standing up or sitting down for yes or no. Uh, so it can be done with any age, right? And uh, when you consider the older students, of course, you adapt that for them. But I'm talking about all for generations, so I'll stick into that. Uh, take advantage to teach the language, to practice. Remember, we talked about students being decision makers at home, at their apps and their games. So it's a new world, uh, and in fact, made of voices. It has always been, but now they're more important, I would say. Let your students guide you. When preparing your, your classes and what you're going to do, think, what are they going to remember? What is authentic? What can relate, really relate to their lives? So. Skills are more important now, not content, as I mentioned before. Provide learning with flexibility. Plan for collaboration. Cultivate soft skills. Go over all the soft skills again. Think, of how can I stimulate that? How can I have the students use that in the foreign language? And this was also very interesting. Uh, Mitch Goldsmith said, at the absolutely brilliant suggestions of blah, 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 I no longer have an attendance policy for my classes. Instead, now I have an engagement policy. I love that. I'll be doing this going forward no matter the semester, but it is especially relevant during uh, COVID and online teaching. So if, if they can be there, and you have seen this. It happened to you. I'm positive. I'm sure. Because all of us, we have seen that. The student is there, but in fact, he's somewhere else and really somewhere else. So instead of having attendance, engagement would be more important. And now when they get back, we're not going to have only, only classes at the schools. We're going to have the hybrid system. So this will be going on in uh, our academic lives with the students. So he will talk about this engagement policy. And uh, I'll leave this for you later so that you can uh, take a look and see suggestions that he has given, okay? I'm not gonna go into that. Be patient, this yes. Emotionally, the students are uh, shaken, I would say. They have been locked up at home, sometimes stressed out with parents, and uh, they didn't have much to do. They were isolated. They were uncomfortable. Uncomfortable because uh, uh, think of that. How are they going to go back to class and start after having class laying down the bed, going back to sitting on our desks at school? Like they have to adapt again. They, they will, they'll probably be a little bit rusty. How do we do things at school? Go over all the rules again, teach them the new ways, teach them the school routines again. It's as if we were coming back from vacation like two years later. The assessment, the focus needs to shift to social more and holistic development, okay? Not necessarily uh, uh, regarding the numbers, the grades. It's got to be looked from a different point of view, definitely. Well, this is uh, something old and super duper useful, I would say, forever. Uh, do you know that? Hope you do. If you don't, then I would uh, suggest that you start taking a look at that because from this pyramid, right, you can uh, uh, you can think of how to demand and ask things for your students. So, for example, level one, remembering. 
How can I make my student remember? What do I want my student to remember? This is Bloom's taxonomy. And then understanding, explain ideas or concepts to see it's different. Applying, using information in new situations, answering questions, solving problems. And then, of course, it demands uh, uh, critical thinking, analysis, and language that goes with that. So if you consider that, you will see that you're going to have a, a, a different view on what you want your students to produce. At the very top of the pyramid, you have the creating, producing something new. So that's the goal, but they have to go through all the steps. There are lots of resources that can help you work with this, okay? Today, I'm not going to go deeper into that. It's just a hint to take a look at that. Now, uh, I don't want to run out of time, so I'm going to start sharing with you some ideas. This is one that I really like, edpuzzle.com. You can make any video that you want. And you can track the student's comprehension. So take a look at this website and you will see how resourceful it can be. That could be done, of course, at school. And it can be in the hybrid system when students are having remote classes with you. So it's going to have you're going to have your students engaged. We were talking about engagement and not attendance. This will save you time because you can work with the YouTube, the Can Academy, with crash courses. Uh, uh, you just re you record and you upload, and it's there. It's something very very easy to work with. Instead of having the homework written down, have it uh, recorded correct from recorded uh, 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 videos. Why not start give the students more motivation because they will rehearse, they will prepare, rehearse, and perform it for you. you and be sure about that. Even in this uh, uh, early age, uh, I would say that students fall in love with the idea of using videos, and you know that. And you can learn, remember, anywhere, anytime. It doesn't really matter where you are. And you can use a YouTube extension then you can add it if you want to maybe put together a portfolio for parents and they can receive that by the end of the year. Why not? A different kind of portfolio. Loom, also interesting. You just you show it, you say it, and you send it. Another one to record messages from your screen, your cam, both, your phone. You, you just, instead of typing, you know, when you're using your WhatsApp and you start recording because uh, you want to go faster, that's exactly what this is for, but for academic purposes, right? And uh, so I also recommend very easy. Of course, they are all free. I only put free examples here for us, okay? Startteachertraining.com, EFL classes after COVID. Just to give an idea, they say avoid contact, and they start giving us different activities that you could be uh, uh, playing and, uh, and doing with your students so that you avoid contact. Take a look at the website and, uh, and you can uh, definitely have fun with the students without getting that close. Worth taking a look, right? Speed speak, listen quick. Make sure that students keep a distance with the games. So at this very beginning, that's what we have to do. So I really recommend it's going to be there for you. Take a look at the Start Teacher Training and uh, use their ideas because they're really, really good. Another idea, www.app.com. This is a web whiteboard that you can use for collaboration work and sharing. This is so easy. This, sorry, I'm back. Uh, it's really a whiteboard and everybody can write on it. So if you want students uh, uh, working together, you can have it in a breakout room and use this and they can uh, perform and present it to you afterwards, for example. Uh, sharing time. Oh my, think of all the things that we used to do that can be done again. Show and tell, mind map questions, two truth and one lie. You can work with all that without getting too close to the students at this very beginning. This was really a pearl. I included the, the, the link for you guys. And this playbook for emergency remote teaching from six to 10 year old learners. 
amazing excellent you can download it's free and it's got lots of different ideas and i fell in love with the ideas and the authors so i do recommend uh definitely great material just to give you an example of things that they have there uh, uh, among lots of different things they will recommend online teaching techniques and methodology free images so that you don't run into problems resources for storytelling so uh, ideas for different games and activities and they will give you the direction of uh, where to find these things i would if i were you i would download it i really had uh, a good time thinking and studying the, the the games to apply at the school that i work with remember the aa board this is how it goes and uh, it's going to show you here you invite the students move them and they all can work at the same board so it's very helpful to have students in a collaborative work littlethings.com also amazing they have tasks for the students uh, that will reach them and when you if you want to, to to talk about different things i wouldn't say this is not for for primary students but right after that for teenagers would be fantastic and uh why gender pronouns matter and how to talk to kids this is about kids about using them correctly about family pets and uh, they have lots of different things a, a ses sessions about moms Horror stories of being a work from home mom that uh, can, we can all. And, and it, it's good to discuss and analyze with the students, etc. Oh, 12 things that to buy that help you absolutely spoil your pet into, in 2021. That's interesting perspective to discuss with the students and, and, and start topics. So this is a cool website. This one, if you don't know it yet, you're going to fall in love. Manybooks.net. Uh, they're free and you can access them and you have all kinds of books that you can think of all these topics are there available for you and uh, sorry manybooks.net and you can open and you can tell the stories and you can read them online okay with the students you can put it on the screen when working at the zone or if you're teaching at the school and you want you you have the chance of getting a smart board uh you you can project and tell the stories there too and read with them as well sutery that's for collaborative learning for pbl interesting students can work together resolve their problems and they can upload uh uh sources and things that they develop and they write etc etc very interesting and uh, the the, the so will also give you 50 different ways of using his tool so you can add quizzes for formative assessment if you decide to go this way you can have links uh students can upload images etc etc thinking of bbl okay very good uh, uh tool this is also very nice. Magic is a com books, you, children's storybooks online. Fell in love with that because you have the stories and you have them with some of them, not all of them, but some of them with the sound, with the recorded things that they tell the stories. This is for, for children, really. Awesome. And these are the genres that you can find. So it's even, uh, 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 it's amazing that you can just open that and start reading the books. And it's really, really uh, interesting, and uh, and uh, I would say engaging. This is one of my favorite things. It's been there since forever. Pen Friends, uh, Cambridge. As when students are in, in in primary school, you can already even if it's not a bilingual school, it doesn't really matter because you see they work with 187 countries. Uh, so many schools all from all over the world, and you're going to fill in a profile of uh, your students, what they're like, what you're looking for, and they will match you with uh, another school from any country. And then your students start working and, and writing, having this pen friends, and they start writing to each other. Uh, that's super stimulating. That's a wonderful war, uh, way of learning how to write, putting your ideas on paper, reading and having uh, real communication 
So I really recommend. I think it's. I think it has always been a great uh, uh, tool that Cambridge has offered us. Oh, this was also super nice. Class Dojo for social and emotional learning. So let's say that you want to work with mindfulness. They present four different ideas. And you go to the ideas and you click. And there is a little movie. Or there is an idea of how to, 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 to implement something of... Uh, of mindfulness and have it with your students. Positive thinking, they are suggesting, yeah, oh, there are three new ideas. And then what are the ideas? And then you can see the, the, the characters playing and performing and suggesting things for the kids and telling stories. It's adorable. And it goes, I would say that it goes for kindergarten, that it goes for primary school too. And uh, it's, they're really cool, that's why. So, for instance, here, getting started with the class judge with their story cards, how to introduce, you can learn, you can show the students, you can move on with that. So, take a look at it. There we go, back again, ideasclassdojo.com. I think it's, uh, it's an important way to go. Oh, what I got to die? No, I'm going to make it. Storyboard.com, a digital storytelling. So we're talking about a oh, pen friend thing that they will communicate. Oh my, here they can create the story. No, not thank you yet. They can create the story, the characters, uh, the villains, what they're going to speak and talk about. And uh, they create the storyboards. So you can have students work in groups, uh, in breakout rooms, uh, not to get too close, or maybe at school using depending on the, the kind of resources you have at school i'm not that sure of uh, the material you have but you can adapt and the thing is once again decision makers right that's who they are they want to produce so my idea today we've got 10 minutes that i'm going to to wrap it up and dedicate to answering any questions you may have uh the idea today was to show you that the alpha generation is different. They have different expectations and we cannot teach them as we used to. So working with the traditional flashcards and, uh, and uh, playing only memory games and things that we, we love doing, I'm not saying not, don't do it, of course you should. But you do have to come up with different ideas and think outside the box and really look at them and analyze who they are and what the needs are for their future. Because nowadays, the tendency is that the, the, the world will be different and it has changed a lot and very fast. And we were able to watch this change, which is, uh, I'm glad that I was around to see that because I know that teachers all over the world are going to improve the way they teach. So this was the good side of the pandemic, if there is any, in fact. Uh, but the thing is, we were able to reinvent ourselves. And, uh, and companies and websites and educational world also was able to reinvent themselves and give us more options publishing houses and internet and so we, we do have just like today how could we be having uh, uh, this conversation today with the number of people we have with people from all over the world and sharing in a way that you're probably at home or at work but you're there and it, it made life connect uh, very easily okay so for now for now, I would say thank you. But the thing is that I will stop sharing it. And I am coming here. I can see your questions now. Let's see. Oh, let's see. Uh, can we affirm that they are the most materially gifted and technology culture generation ever to grace the planet? In my opinion, yes. And uh, I'm not saying it's it's good and i'm not saying it's bad it's a fact you know it's really a fact 
So uh, I uh, I would say so, Weber. Do you agree that 2.8 million generation are, uh, alpha are born worldwide every week? The statistics that I that I looked for, that I was reading said said, uh, said so. So if I agree with that, that's what I read. That's what I'm sharing with you. Uh, well, what I know is that this pandemia helped people have children, definitely. Um, and I asked, babies know how to use iPads better than us. That's absolutely true. When you're teaching and uh, you're online and you have a problem or you want to update or you have to change something uh, uh, or you get a new tablet, uh, they just, all of them, they know what to do. Even before we think of it, they have already done it. I agree entirely with you. And Diva said, uh, as I see here at home with my son, I realize he tend to be lazier. I agree with you. I think they are lazier too. I think they're more creative somehow because they have more resources that they have. The amount of information they get, they get is so different from what we used to get. Or, or I have my, my, my children are around 20s now and, uh, and I thought they were fast. Everything was too fast. But when I see the kids, this alpha generation now, it's even faster. So I'm always very, very amazed. Indeed, Anna said here, we need to know the likes and dislikes of our students in order to make our classes more engaging and exciting, right? Yes, I agree totally. Listening has always been one of the best tools teachers could uh, ever use. So I would say that, yes, ask them. Don't be afraid. They will tell you. They will definitely tell you. And Kahoot is not the only thing that we can use to, to work with the students. Although lots of people use Kahoot, I'm not, I'm not against, I'm for. But there are lots of other different things that you can do that will challenge the students. Uh, Minavina Benez is said, to my point of view, parents should manage this in a very careful way. Most of them just put the device on the kid's hand and they spend the amount of time they want to. I agree with you. As was said during the, the, uh, my presentation, these this, uh, uh, devices were used as pacifiers. How many of you tell me you, when we were going out before and you were in a restaurant and you would see a kid starting, ah, and parents give the mobile. So they say, oh, there you go, baby. You play with my mobile. And that's the best fire. So uh, just transferring responsibility. Um, uh, that I'm not for, no. But OK, this is very personal. Uh, Weber asks, can we say that those born in Generation Z and Alpha are more self-sufficient? I, I would say, uh, I would say yes. Because if you think of our, but you know what? Think of the situation of the world nowadays. If you think of it, they had to become more autonomous. Uh, they had to become more self-sufficient because parents had to work at home or out or here or there. And, and, and many, many, many kids had to find a way out and they were faster to, to, to learn things and, and try things. So I would say, yes, I agree with you. Once again, I'm not so sure this is good or this is bad. It is what it is. Christina, uh, she said, I think technology for technology does not matter. However, the teacher can involve the child with technology, interacting with each other, and with the teacher makes all the difference in the results. Oh, I agree with you. I, in the past, people would say, oh, do you think the teachers will last forever? And people say, oh, I don't know, maybe the machines will replace. No, we're never going to be replaced because teachers are the link. We are the connection. The devices or anything else we use, these are our tools, and the tools can change. But our aim and, uh, and our, our perspective will always be the same. We want to teach them. We want to see them uh, progress. Anna Souza said, not self-sufficient, but we give them tools to be thinkers. Yeah, that's what the 21st century skills uh, 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 promote. 
that we help the students learn how to think, how to solve problems, how to come up with different solutions, how to be creative, how to work together, etc. So yes, I agree. And uh, Weber said, are they more self-sufficient because they use computational tools? Well, I can't, I don't think that's the only thing. I think that helps. Uh, I think that all devices help, even the t TVs at home, or the the, the the mobiles and things. Of course, the YouTube, the Netflix, they know what they want. But not only that, they had to help at home. You know, uh, other generations did that too. But uh, they had to, to learn and, uh, and they had to, to help the families, you know. And that, of course, will will make students, uh, children, more self sufficient in all the ways. Well, I'm here saying my goodbyes. There are two minutes to go, and I really want to thank you so much for spending time, for talking to me here in the private chat. And uh, I hope you can check the lecture later and use the links and do the best you can with your students. Thank you so so much. And have a wonderful afternoon with the next lectures and tomorrow and everything else. So thank you so much. Thank you once again, SBS, for inviting me. Okay. Thanks a Bye -bye. lot, Lilia. Uh, thanks a lot, everybody who joined us today. Uh, the link to download your certificates are already available in this video description, uh, as well as the links from the videos Lilian showed us. Okay, if you want to watch it again. The links are on this video description. Uh, we're going to start now Isabella's, Isabella Villas-Boas lecture, talking about time for a paradigm shit, shift in assessment. And hope to see you guys there. Thanks a lot for your time, Lillian. And thanks a lot, everybody. Hope to see you on our next lecture. Bye-bye.